Once upon a time, in a kingdom far away, there lived a king called Adipoju and his queen called Runke, who were desperate to have a child. After years of trying, their prayers were finally answered and they were blessed with a healthy baby boy. The entire village rejoiced and celebrated the birth of the royal child. But little did they know that this child was destined for a terrible fate. A few days after the baby's birth, the village priest came to the palace to reveal a prophecy that sent shivers down everyone's spine. The prophecy stated that the newborn prince would sleep with his mother, marry her, and kill his father. The villagers were horrified and devastated by this prophecy. The king and the queen were terrified and did everything in their power to avert this horrible prophecy from coming to pass. They couldn't believe that their precious child would bring such destruction upon their family. In an attempt to avert the prophecy, King Adekpoju decided that the young prince must be killed. The queen, heartbroken and sorrowful, begged her husband to spare the baby's life. But it was adamant. He believed that by getting rid of the child, he could prevent the prophecy from being fulfilled. The palace chief guard named Bonle was instructed to take the baby to the evil forest and kill him there. Bonle took the baby and journeyed to the evil forest to carry out the king's command. On getting to his destination, Bonle took out his cutlass and as he was about to slaughter the baby, his eye caught the baby's beautiful face. Looking so innocent and unaware of what was about to befall him, Bonle got cold feet and couldn't bring himself to kill such a harmless soul. So he decided he would abandon the baby in the evil forest and let wild animals and beasts devour the child. But the gods had other plans for this child. The next morning, as fate would have it, a kind hunter from a neighboring village found the baby while hunting in the forest and took him in, raising him as his own son. The hunter and his wife loved the baby as their very own and named him Wamiri. As Wamiri grew, it was evident that he was not an ordinary boy, for he possessed unparalleled strength and intelligence, which gained him a reputation amongst the villagers. As Wamiri grew up, he became known as a fierce warrior. His adoptive father trained him in the art of warfare, and he quickly became one of the best in the land. He also learned the ways of the forest and became an expert at hunting and tracking. With his skills, Wamiri helped defend his new village against invaders and even led successful attacks on neighboring villages. But all the while, Wamiri had no idea of his true identity. He never knew he was adopted and had no knowledge of the prophecies surrounding his birth. As the years went by, his adoptive father passed away and Wamiri became the leader of the village. Under Wamiri's rule, the villagers prospered. He led his people to victory in many wars and soon his village became one of the most powerful in the land. However, it was during one of these numerous wars that he led an attack on a kingdom called Ajayi. Wamiri and his army waged war on this kingdom for days and finally conquered this kingdom on the seventh day. Wamiri slaughtered the king who refused to submit to his authority and married the king's beautiful wife 
Wamiri then marched all the kingdoms and villages he had conquered with his army. He named the marched kingdoms, say Midiri, and crowned himself the king and emperor over the entire empire. Wamiri, who possessed great leadership skills, ruled the kingdom with ease and the people of Temidire kingdom started getting used to things. But as months passed, strange things began to happen in the kingdom. All the village rivers turned to blood. A plague of leprosy struck some villagers and many other evil occurrences took place. Wamiri was puzzled and wondered day and night why all these calamities came upon his kingdom. One afternoon, the Ifa priest was summoned to the palace. The tribe chiefs and the queen were also present. King Wamiri asked the priests to inquire from the gods why they had chosen to forsake the kingdom of Temidiri. The priests then revealed to the king what the gods have told him, saying, My king, the gods are angry. A certain family in Temidiri kingdom has committed a taboo. Wamiri impatiently said, What taboo was committed and which family is guilty of this crime? The priest replied by saying, The taboo committed is incestuous, a son sleeping with his mother, his birth mother. This the gods have revealed to me. King Wamiri, boiling with so much anger, swore that he would kill the whole family involved in this sacrilege. Starting from the sun, partaking in such an unholy act, Wamiri asked the priest again about how they could identify the family involved. The priest answered by saying, It is you, my king. You have brought the rain of sorrow over your people. King Wamiri, with so much rage, pulled out a cutlass and was about to strike the priests. While shouting, How dare you tell a lie against your king? How dare you, Ifarokbo? The priest continued by saying, The gods cannot lie, my king. You are the man that has brought doom upon the kingdom of Temidire. You slept with your mother, and because of this unholy act leading to a taboo pregnancy, the gods have turned their backs on us. Wamiri started sweating profusely, looking very confused as he searched his mind for answers. His new wife, the former queen of Ajayi, rushed to the king and checked the back of his ear. After checking his ear, she immediately let out a loud scream. I am finished! I am finished! She shouted. She fell to the ground and said, You shouldn't be alive. How can this be happening? With everyone looking confused, Queen Ronke continued, You are my son. We tried to avert this prophecy. Your father and I tried. We tried. Everyone seated was confused, and one of the chiefs had to ask the queen what she meant by her words. Unknowing to all, the queen was the same Queen Ronke, wife of King Adepoju, who were both told the evil prophecy of how their newborn baby would kill his father, sleep with his mother, and marry her. Queen Ronke narrated in tears every detail of the 27 years old prophecy and how she and her then husband tried to avert it by killing the child, who is obviously King Wamiri. Every single bit of the prophecy came to pass. Wamiri killed his father Adikpoju, who was the king of Ajayi kingdom, that refused to surrender 
after the kingdom was conquered by Wamiri. Wamiri married and slept with his mother, who he thought was just the beautiful wife of the deceased king, and even impregnated her. Realizing the gravity of what had happened, the queen, who was also Wamiri's mother, was filled with shame and decided she was going to end her life. She couldn't bear the thoughts of what had happened between her and her son. It is a taboo, she thought. Oh, it is a taboo. She left the meeting and headed to her room, where she picked a knife and stabbed herself. King Wamiri was filled with self-loathing. He was shocked to his bones to know about his unfortunate fate. He couldn't believe that he had caused such destruction in his own kingdom. He also remembered how he swore to kill the family that brought woes to his kingdom, starting from the son that committed the taboo. The word of a king is law and his decrees must be carried out without fail. This means King Wamiri has to end his life. It is too late to turn back now from his earlier pronouncements. King Wamiri retired to his hut and poisoned himself. The moral lesson from this story include the consequences of trying to evade destiny. King Adekpoju and Queen Ronke tried so hard to stop destiny from coming to pass and ended up helping the fulfillment of the prophecy. Another moral lesson from this story is the importance of empathy and mercy. If Wamiri had shown mercy to King Adekpoju, his father, he wouldn't have ended up killing him and later regretting his action. This tale also highlights the theme of fate, showing that attempts to change one's destiny may lead to tragic outcomes. Additionally, we have seen the significance of pronouncements and utterances. If King Wamiri didn't angrily pronounce that he would kill the family that committed the taboo, he might still be alive today. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like, share, and watch out for the next one.